wrong a lot. Right. He's really wrong in this segment. It's a good thing started. Here goes a clip from Bill Maher being it? wrong. And yeah. finally, new rule. From now on, when Joe Biden veers off into one of his long-winded stories that seem to be off-topic, everyone must realize he usually does have a point. But those of you who are over 50, how often did you ever see, how often did you ever see advertisements on television with black and white couples? Not a joke. I challenge you, find today when you turn on the stations, sit on one station for two hours, and I don't know how many commercials you'll see, lay eight to five, two to three out of five have mixed race couples in them. Okay, so I know Bill's about to talk, and we can comment about Bill, but um, Joe, you do understand that uh, slave owners had mixed race children, right? You know how? Because they raped their slaves. <laughs> like that didn't like make race relations better. It's, I'm all, play it's the, all symbolism anyway. It's all symbolism. I'll play this little section. Let's let Bill respond and then we'll respond to Bill. Or yeah, we'll respond to Bill and yeah. let Tim respond oh, to Bill, Bill too. Okay. Yeah, because Bill has a, you know, Bill's an idiot. He's a racist. He's a, yeah. he's a white liberal. He's a white conservative race, a white liberal conservative racist because he don't know what he is. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, I know it sounds kind of out of left field, but actually Uncle Joe is pointing liberals towards something they need to be more aware of. They have a bad case of progressive phobia. That's the phrase coined by Steven Pinker to describe a brain disorder that strikes liberals and makes them incapable of recognizing progress. And Bill Maher and, Bill Bo and Joe Biden both have something I would like to call false equivocitis. <laughs> That's when you falsely <laughs> equivocate things that don't matter, you put them together to fit your own agenda. False equivocitis. First of all, who sits around counting how many black or white or mixed couples there are in the commercials they just watched? A racist does. Kind of disproving your point. See, Bill Maher and Joe Biden want to show Ow. that we've reached some type of racial progress because advertisers want black people to spend money with them. But back in like the 50s, there was this like informational commercial to white advertisers. The secret of selling the Negro. Now these days, nobody's likely to pass up chances to sell. And yet right here in our own front yard, there's a neglected market. There's money waiting to be spent. To get the story of this market, to be able to tell you the secret of selling the Negro. White people realized something crazy, which was black people had money. Yeah, it's sort of why Tosa happened. Mm -hmm. With bitter, jealous white people who saw that black people actually made money, put it in their pockets, and bought goods and services with it. It's not a sign of racial equality or racial equity because some greedy ass <laughs> companies want black people to part with their money for overpriced consumer goods. Okay, not hold up, hold up, pause. I knew people who were- So um, before, I let, before I let John go, because I want John to go first, again, I would like to say, Tim Black, here are your flowers, sir. Kudos, claps to you, sir. I know we playing like the whole video, but you know what? Damn it, Tim, you making me watch your goddamn show. And I didn't even care for your fucking show like that. I never had a problem with you, but you were never. No, I never had a problem with the man, but you were never really a show that I would watch like that. But your content right now, I, I'm watching. I, I, I'm watching and I feel it. I feel it enough to be like, maybe y'all should be watching Tim Black because we don't do a daily news show. I hope. Oh, you know, as long as Tim doesn't pull another fuck force the vote, I feel I'm starting to feel a little comfortable. You know, just just don't <laughs> just don't ruin it for me when the midterms come, Tim. Please don't ruin it for me, please. But yes, John, go first. What do you what do you think about this? This uh, now that we have interracial couples on advertising, niggas have overcome. <laughs> That's what we were fighting. That's what we were fighting for in the '60s, so we could oh, get in the commercials. We fought, yeah, we was fighting to get in the commercials and to be able to just lay down with the other white people. But tell me, like, whether they be man or woman. 
that's what the civil that's what the civil rights movement was about sexual access to white women (laughs) and for black women to white men that's what the whole sexual that's what the whole civil rights movement was about getting white peen and white puss go ahead john i'm sorry forgive me and the crazy part like it's like the whole civil rights movement you know what i mean like we gonna get into that it was all about just negroes being included in society and being seen as normal like just being seen as citizens, the human, the people that we are, human beings that contributed to this country and gave something to this country. Like that's what it was about. It, was, it wasn't, you know what I mean? Having the rightful, the rightful laws and the rightful say to do like, as we please here in America. Like it wasn't about trying to marry somebody from an, like you know what I mean? Like it feel like we chose to do so far. But like that's not the core thing. And the fact that you got Bill Maher out here talking about some, you see these commercials, he, he's Joe Biden is saying. You see these commercials? It's black people, it's interracial couples on every eight commercial and all this other shit. Man, come on, man. This is all bullshit. And I'm happy Tim Black called it out. Man, I'm not, I'm happy Tim Black called the shit out. He called that shit out flat too, like on this on the square. On the square. So I ain't really got much to say about that. Tim Black really pointed everything out with that. So that's what I got. You know what I mean? I mean around me. My bad. Yeah, I mean, Tim called it out. I mean, the reality is interracial couples have been around a long time, right? So, like Sam pointed out, slavery was something different. But, I mean, since the Loving case, it's been legal. It is what it is. And I don't understand how this, this, these couples being on TV is some sort of progress. I don't – there is – this is not progress. This is just acknowledging that these people exist and you and, and corporate America wants their money. That's exactly. all it is. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what it is. It's not it's not, it's not even about the interracial couples. You're right, bro. It's, it's honestly, that's all, uh, the liberals, the anti all they think we believe, that all they think, think that's our as black people is symbolism. Especially specifically those of us that descend from slavery, right? Because they we've in, because we've symbolism. enjoyed it. Because we've yeah. taken symbolism and we've okay. So okay. Oh my God. So, okay. Translation in English. Cause there's this song by Selena and it's called no Keramas. but there's a part in this song where she talks about, I took an illusion and I used that illusion to feed my soul. That is black people in America mm. with fucking symbolism. Go ahead, MG. I'm sorry mm. for cutting you off. Yeah, but, that hit. Okay. Yeah, but, but you know what, Sam, I, I, I think, I, I, I think that I think we want it more. Right, I think we truly wanted more, but after seeing uh, JFK, RFK, um, MLK get their heads blown off, that kind of changed the dynamic of what we were, what we were demanding. Right, I, I think we always wanted more, but we kind of lost our way in trying to get there. We thought, okay, we'll do the best we can with what we got because that's what we've always done. Right, we got I pussy. Think if if MLK would have been. Uh, uh, let's call Sorry, it. I'm working on being uh, a lady. We got soft. So they killed a bunch <laughs> of our leaders and we said, uh, we don't want to die. So we just went yeah. to sleep instead when we should have kept jail, fighting yeah. because the only mm-hmm. thing, the only way that you make progress in this country is if you keep fighting. People are going to mm-hmm. die. People have always died. Our people are dying now in the streets. Mm-hmm. Sorry, go yeah, ahead, MG. I, I'm sorry for talking about this. But, but I also think like, along with that, Sam, though, I also think the media played a big role in that, right? You know, all these folks were, were murdered or jailed, and and these these, these organizations were were cointel proed into nothingness, and and then the media stopped talking about it, right? It was like everything's okay, we're not going to talk about it. So the media also played a role in this, and we and we had a whole lot of kumbaya stuff, even though, Cosby Show, different yeah, world. Then we, then we got Cosby Show, different world after you know Good Times and Sanford and Son were gone and then we got he caused me in a different world into thinking that everything was cool all we got to do is go to hcu and life will go, and life will be you know life will be wonderful and that's not how the real world functions i think we're this reparations movement is sort of um a reawakening of our activism and we are the activism generator in the united states of america maybe globally i get yeah we have for, for for non-white people, we are the we are the generator for for global activism, and it is what it is. People can be mad about that, but the descendants of of, of Ch- 
chattel slavery in the United States? Yes. Uh, people, people, people will deny it. Certain people will deny it. We know who they are, but it's real. It is absolutely real. So, um, yeah. That's all Facts. I got. Facts. So, Bill Maher, just because you fuck black chicks, it does not mean that that is black people's reparations, and it doesn't mean that racism is over. Just because you fuck a couple raggedy assholes and a fuck a couple of black people give you a pass to say nigga does not give you an invitation to the cookout and it does not make you qualified to speak about black people or black issues. I need you to go somewhere and sit down and eat your fucking food. And until you allow HBO to pay you in free college, free housing in the hood with fucking solar panels, like John likes to say. Um, solar panels the other- in the ghetto. What's the other bullshit? And $15 an hour until that is acceptable for you as a rich white Jewish man, I need you to shut the fuck up. Okay. Anybody else? Just or should before we, we get to the, the, Before we get to the next segment, though, I just want to say something personally about me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, my two times great grandmother, you know what I mean? Like, so my great grandmother is Snow White. You know what I mean? Like, real oh. shit. Yeah, I don't, if real shit, I don't know. You can see me on Twitter. I'll show up. Yep. I look like black. I'm damn near Igbo. I'm black. You I'm black. Black, black. And my great grandmother is Snow White because my great great grandmother got into a consensual relationship with a white man. So that means that my great great grandfather, out of slavery, you know what I mean, is is is, is white. Is is an Irish guy. You know what I mean, like. But so, but at the end of the day, like the shame and the hot and all this other shit, and not it's not about. I understand what people be trying to keep our people together. Of course, we want black people to be with black people. Of course, I understand that. But like what he's doing and what Bill Maher and these motherfucking liberal races are doing are saying like, look, it's in the open now. Like, you know how I used to hide? <laughs> it's like, remember you used to hide my grandmother in them? Now you can kind of do it and be want to sell you a car. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not, this is not racial progress, my nigga. This is not race. Like, this is not racial progress. Like, this not is bullshit. All. Like, this is bullshit. This makes you feel better. That makes you when, when, when people, when the police blow our brain out and you drive through the ghettos and see all the homeless populations, it makes you sleep better at night because you're a white man and you're like, yo, white people are with black people and it's on TV now and it's, and it's all right. So that's, that means everything is cool now. You know what I mean? Like, but it was never about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I mean, like, this whole shit is fucked up. Our whole thing is about, like, we just want to be accepted as the people that we are and, 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 be, and be acknowledged for our contributions to our, this society and be given what's owed to us. That's what it's about, because once we get that, then a lot of these other things won't even really matter. But they matter so much because you didn't do the groundwork to really pay us back. You ain't do the, you ain't, you ain't do the, the repair yet. You ain't really even start doing the repair. That's why these things are so easy, because you don't really want to do the repair. You like this type of shit. Like, yo, look, 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 it's a white dude with a black girl. It's a black girl with a white dude. Look, and nobody cares. Because by the end of the day, like, it's a different, that that black girl family got, it's different. It's different. That's, that's all I got to say, man. So Bill Maher's on some bullshit and 10 Black called the shit out. But I just wanted to say that from my personal experience. You know what I'm saying? Like, they let you know it's real. It's real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's all. That's all, man. All right, I'm gonna play some more. Let's go. Let's Bye. see what Bill bitch ass got to say. And to prison yeah. for growing pot. And today you can legally smoke it for fun in 43% of the country, and I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm a little tired of Bill. No, I'm gonna go before Tim goes on this one. I just want to jump in because I've said this before. So, yes, now in 43% of the country, you can smoke weed and it's legal. But for black people to get into the cannabis industry, you got to show a hundred grand sitting in the bank. Plus, you got to get a bond. But you got to show that you got a hundred grand just sitting in the bank, just sitting there. Not that you need for bills. That shit just got to be sitting there. Black people, how many people do you know that just got a hundred grand just sitting in the fucking bank? And if you're a black person who went to jail for growing and selling weed, you cannot get into the narcotics business. You cannot go work for one of these rich ass white companies as a grower and make your bread. Even though you spent all those years in jail after spending all that time getting all that knowledge to learn how to grow. So I wanna play Tim's response and then I want you guys to respond after Tim, if that's okay. Go ahead. Okay. 
are trying to make it seem cool that he smokes weed. A lot of people smoke weed, Bill. And them legalizing weed was not so much an effort for them to step into the future as it was an effort to grab money. America just got greedy and they figured that, hey, it could make more money, you know, taxing marijuana than it could from housing blacks for selling it. That's it. Institutional racism. That makes it harder for black folks to open weed dispensaries. But people like Bill Maher don't have that problem. You keep forgetting the money. This entire Randy goes on is all about superficiality. In 1958, only 4% of Americans approved of interracial oh, marriage. Oh, sorry. Now... Pause. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. What do you guys got before that part? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I agree with you, Sam. This, this whole, the whole thing about weed, it, 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 it's a money grab. We're still locked out. Um, they, use, they use those, those, those wild-ass reasons, like the $100,000 in, in the bank. You know, as if... And this, this is the wild thing. So even if you can get a uh, hundred thousand dollar loan you can't use it to pay to pay yourself you can't it's got to be just sitting there which is yeah. wild to me you know i and, got money they, in the bank yep they, <laughs> and they know they know the vast majority of black people can't even play that game they can't even get anywhere near the goddamn casino never mind play in that game and it's intentional it's an, it's completely intentional way to lock black people out of this industry that has put so many of, of our people in jail so, uh, and, and, and it's, it's unconscious. That's all I got. John, what you got, man? Yeah, man. I think that Bill Maher, I think that we talked about this on the show with the KKK Kalinsky show when he was talking about mm. how white people always say legalizing drugs is a way that's going to directly affect your community. It's, no, it's a, the thing about it is an offshoot for, to get, it's an offshoot to make you feel better because you want to do drugs or you want your kids to do drugs. Yeah, you, you want your kids right. to do drugs and not have to go to jail for 40 years. Yep, exactly. Yep. They don't want, you want to be free. You know, first of all, y'all already do drugs way more freely than us and go to jail way less than us. Mm -hmm. so, but you way, want that You want that less to go away. And that's a consequence. That means that I might not be going to get a felony because of weed. But like at the end of the day, you're not thinking about what the drug war is really about like. I feel like if you got to flip it on his head, like, you know what? I want a homestead act for black men that have been affected by the, for black men that have been affected by the motherfucking war on drugs, need a homestead act. They yep. need, especially the, the ones in particular, the black men in particular that got felonies because of weed, they need land immediately. You need to show them how to grow the weed. You need to give them the tools to grow the weed. I'm talking about the distribution side. Then give them business classes and then give them grants. Mm -hmm. And then give them loans, and then give them anything, any tool that they need yep. to be oh, able oh, to John, you John. Give them At the very same time that America refused to give the Negro any land, through an act of Congress, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms. Not only that, Today, many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And this is what we are faced with, and this is a reality. Now, when we come to Washington in this campaign, we are coming to get our check. First, 1863 to the last homesteader, Kenneth Deerdorf, who received his land patent in 1988. The impact of the Homestead Act is still felt to this day. One must ask themselves, what indeed was the true cost of giving away 270 million acres of public land, roughly 10% of this nation, over to private ownership? Bringing with them their own hopes, dreams, and cultural backgrounds, many people emigrated from Europe to Homestead, 
Shifting Immigration Patterns. The Homestead Act of 1862 was one of the most significant and enduring events in the westward expansion of the United States. The Homestead Act also helped to fuel the Industrial Age. The ever-increasing need for goods in the West inspired the invention, the production, and the delivery of these goods. Farm equipment quickly evolved from the use of hand tools to what we see today. One thing all homesteaders had in common was their desire for better lives for themselves and their children. Over the 124-year history of the Homestead Act, over 2 million people filed homestead claims. Of these 2 million people, about 783,000, approximately 40%, were successful, fulfilling all the requirements of the government and earning the patent to their property. Today, over 90 million people are descendants of homesteaders. Indeed, the Homestead Act of 1862 has had a significant impact on the United States. And the ultimate cost of giving this land away we, you remember, so, you so saying, yes. saying that they deserve the white treatment because what you're saying is what they did for white farmers when they brought people over here and That's pushed exactly. us instead of giving us land, they gave them damn John. Ooh, John, look at you That's trying to start fight. Ooh, I am, I am sorry, saying John, that ooh, that is sexy. I'm, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Ooh. I'm saying that for black men that have been affected by the drug, especially when it comes to marijuana, if you were a black man. Real shit, like, and I'm cool with keeping it all flat black because we know we break the numbers down. It's gonna be mostly Negroes in that shit anyway. And a few flat black people got caught up in the system. I'm, 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 I'm all right with that. Not reparations, none of that, but I'm all right with that. But you need to. I, I see Bill Maher was saying like the war on drugs really targets. I know some black people got caught up. Then you gotta get your piece on the other side. I know black people got caught up. You gotta get your piece on the other side. But for black men, it's a new black man homestead act. For all the black men that went to jail for drugs, like that, we say they just made drugs legal now. We about to really, you feel me? Like, if you got imprisonment falsely, we giving you money. You feel me? You got, if you went to jail for weed, we are going to show you how to farm your own weed and be a distributor. Fuck owning a business. You about to be the center man, not the middle man or the last man. You about to, you about to learn every aspect of the business. You gonna be gonna set you up like that, and as a consequence, you being white, you wanted to smoke weed, you get to smoke weed now. Instead of, I just, yep. I smoke weed and I think smoking weed is cool and I shouldn't have nothing happen to me. Yep. And, and, and that makes your life better. Fuck and they, that, and they get And they get, and they exactly. get contracts, they get contracts to provide medical marijuana. They, yep. So, I mean, they get federal contracts to provide Everything. medical marijuana to, to, mm -hmm. to, the, to, the, to the federal to, to the federal system once it becomes legal. That's what I'm talking, that, that's a good thinking, John. Because those contracts, will, that will bring some wealth because that money keeps coming. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, John, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. Listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in to Reset Race. Uh, uh, you're listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in to Reset Race. Put them back on the grill again, we grilling them. Put them back on the grill again, we grilling them. Put them back on the grill again, we grilling them. Back on the grill again, we grilling them. Listening to Reset Race, Adels need reparations to make America make great. America uh, great. You're tuned in to Reset Race, we no longer starving while others eat off our plate. No, you're listening to Reset Race, we focused on our justice claim, we know what is at stake. Uh, you're tuned in to Reset Race, you find out who really dealt justice and really who we fake. On the edge, go back to U.S. Southern plantations. Penny's, Jim Crow, and mass incarceration. Redline and lynchings, we are old from this nation. You're not about justice if you ain't for reparations. MG, the wise one, cousin mother intellectual. Samantha bringing fire, anti-black, we pressing up. No permanent friends and no permanent enemies. The backbone of the country, the way you need our energy. You gon' see, listening to Reset Race. You now tuned in the reset race. Uh, uh, you're listening to reset race. You now tuned in the reset race. Uh, put them back on the grill again. We grilling them. Put them back on the grill again. We grilling them. Put them back on the grill again. We grilling them. Back on the grill again. We grilling them. Uh, you're listening.
Listen in the reset race. Ado need reparations to make America make great. America uh, great. Get tuned in the reset race. We no longer starving while others eat off our plate. No. You're listening to Reset Race. We focused on our justice plan. We know what is at stake. Uh, you tuned in the Reset Race. You'll find out we're really about justice and really who we think. Uh. Until you do right by me, everything you think about is going to crumble. I wouldn't suggest that they vote for any party or either party. Uh, I would suggest that the so-called Negroes become politically mature, realize the power that they hold uh, in the field of politics, and then uh, once the person who is running is aware that this man is awakened to the power that he holds, then that person who is running will approach that Negro on a more intelligent plane. As it is right now, most of the Negro leaders sell out to the political, to the white politicians for a crumb. And uh, an awakening, a political awakening among Negroes will make it impossible for the present uh, Negro leaders to sell our people out as they've been doing in the past. Today, many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And this is what we are faced with, and this is the reality. Now, when we come to Washington, in this campaign, we are coming to get our checks.